Hi, how are you? Well, thank you. We just heard uh, from Ross Francis, who's based in Australia as well, that he was wearing shorts. Is that the same with you too? Absolutely, yep. No, we've got about 26, 27 degrees today. Super cool. So, um, but in the end, it's not about shorts. It's about five enterprise architecture best practices. Welcome to Craig Stanley. Thank you. The two thirds of enterprise architecture initiatives fail to deliver on the organization's anticipated goals. According to some analysis done by several Malaysian academics, two thirds of EA initiatives do not deliver the intended business outcomes. In this talk, I'd like to explore some of the reasons for this and with the help of a survey, which was conducted by the McKinsey um, Institute and the Henley Business School, we can identify some practices that increase our chance of not only success, but establishing an EA practice that provides significant value for our organisations. Hi, I'm Craig Stanley and I'm the lead architect for the Citadel Group. I'm in Brisbane, as mentioned, and uh, I'd like to thank LinaX for hosting the event today. And it's great that we've got the opportunity for so many uh, people in the Asia Pacific region to be able to attend this global event. Citadel is an Australian company. We're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. We provide a range of technology solutions and services to our clients. And most significantly for today, we are the LinaX distribution partner for the APAC region. And as mentioned, I lead the EA practice, and along with um, our LinaX capability, we provide a range of additional architectural services. So, back to the topic at hand, how do we ensure the success of our EA initiatives? Let's look at the findings of this survey from the McKinsey and uh, Henley Business School. They found that some organisations approach digital initiatives through intuition, investing boldly um, and adopting cutting edge technologies at scale, and that this often leads to an increase, increasingly complex technology landscape and a difficult to manage environment. They highlight the need for enterprise architects to manage technology complexity and to set the course for the development of their organisation's IT landscape. So, spoiler alert, here's the, th the five best practices we're going to talk about today. Number one is engage top executives in key decisions. Two is to emphasise strategic planning. Three is to focus on business outcomes. Four is to use capabilities to connect business and IT. And five is to develop and retain high calibre talent. So, let's step through each of these in more detail. One, engage top executives in key decisions. So it's common for CIOs and CTOs to be involved in EA initiatives. Uh, often I've found one or more of these um, roles engaged in an architectural review board or other similar body, but the real value is generated when the EA insights and practices are extended beyond this group and we develop artefacts that are accessible to a wider audience. Have you ever seen or perhaps been an architect who's developed a wonderfully accurate or as is to be Archimate representation and then presented this to a business stakeholder or executive group? Usually, in my experience, this is when their interest wanes and the informed decision making is compromised. We need to ensure buy-in from senior execs by developing relevant material which show how technology supports their business. Sometimes people use the term architecture to describe architectural artefacts that are widely accessible and informative, but not limited to the group of trained architects or other technical personnel. Whatever we call it, we need to provide information that is presented in a way that supports the viewpoint and interest of various stakeholders. Throughout the other presentations today, I'm sure you'll get a, to see a great range of approaches to consider your objective and audience and then present information in a way that is engaging and accessible for your stakeholders. Practice number two, emphasise strategic planning. Organisational strategy is a great way to align resources effectively. Organisations approach this in a range of ways. Some have a strategy on a page, 
while others a 40-slide presentation or an 80-page document, and for some organisations it's not written down at all. For the enterprise architect, this creates a challenge and an opportunity to work with business and IT to document roadmaps, target states, programs of work. Um, enterprise architecture is about visualising and communicating the plan for the future. How many of your enterprise architects are working on strategic activities? We regularly see our best and brightest enterprise architects being redirected to support problem of the day, tactical activities that need to be resolved to keep the lights on. But according to the McKinsey survey, the Organisations who are most successful with digital transformation will expend at least 20% of their EA resources on strategic activities. So again today, you'll see a range of ways to generate information to support the communication of your strategy. These will include roadmaps, portfolio plans, and in particular, features of the new uh, business transformation management module um, which we're hearing so much about and we'll dig into deeper in other sessions. Practice number three, focus on business outcomes. A mentor of mine used to use the phrase, uh, we don't want to develop a self-licking ice cream. It alludes to a solution which doesn't really address a business need. Sure, it might be fun to build, but sort of misses the point. We can automate all manner of things but we must continually look to the business value in doing so. We must look at what is valuable to the business and ensure that our EA practice is not an ivory tower, but is pragmatic and practical in its role. LeanIX and the configurable data model is a great demonstration of this. The quick start approach allows organisations to focus on their priority outcomes immediately. We see clients with true business value in four to six weeks. And as the EA business IT relationship matures, we can then extend the data model to provide greater value in more complex scenarios. And thanks to Vice, I think you showed some good demonstrations of that uh, occurring over time. Practice number four, um, using capabilities to connect business and IT. So much has been written on the use of business capabilities. The open group, has published the, business, the capability based planning documents. Other organisations have their extensions and variations to this. Business capabilities are essentially self contained business activities, often made up of people, process, information, and technology. These can be grouped up into develop a multi level business capability model. The business capability mapping to IT operations is one of the simplest methods of opening communication with a range of stakeholders to understand and rationalise the portfolio. So once you've got a reasonable capability model, this is really powerful. Ideally, we'd create a bespoke capability model for an organisation, but this is not always practical in the short term. Many clients get significant benefit by simply tweaking one of the reference capability models. This grouping enables focus on areas that are core differentiators for the organisation and they can target their investment where they're going to have the greatest impact. Practice number five, developing and retaining high calibre talent. So it's often said that money is a key enabler of people rather than a motivator. Once you've employed some great people, the best way to keep them interested and motivated is to present them with interesting challenges a supportive environment and recognising their success. Our experience, both with client organisations and within our own team whilst working with LeanIX, has been to see greater engagement. The learning resources have provided a pathway for architects and consultants to develop new valuable skills which can be employed to more effectively solve complex problems and in turn contribute more to the organisation. Using contemporary tools such as LeanIX, which encourage engagement across the organisation, provides broad awareness of the value of the EA team, but also its pivotal role in helping the organisation navigate the ever-changing environments. So, to sum it all up, engage top executives in key decisions with accessible accurate and current information. 
emphasise strategic planning using roadmaps, target states and progress tracking. Follow on, uh, sorry, focus on business outcomes by engaging business experts. Use capabilities to connect business and IT through heat maps and matrices. Develop and retain high calibre talent by keeping the challenges interesting and recognising success. I wish you all the best wherever you are in your enterprise architecture journey. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, we can do some questions if, if, if there are any. All right, first of all, thank you very much, Mr. Craig Stanley. Thank you. Of course, we want to use the time and to use it in the best way possible. And we would love to have a short Q&A session with you because we still have some time left. And I do already see the first question online. Uh, it is, how do you connect capabilities with business objectives within Lean IX? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And I think we're um, going to see some excellent ways of resolving that um, in, in the near future. So business transformation um, management, I know that module actually provides that direct link. Um, we've been using it within our clients, um, typically through um, strategic tagging um, and, and, and adding properties to the, um, to the fact sheets themselves. So collecting those, um, those um, fact sheets and associating them to those, um, those properties for, for those objectives and outcomes. Do we have some more questions here inside the plenary hall, probably? Is there anything you want to ask? Now it's the time, it's the chance. All right, I do not see hands rising up inside here. I do have another question that is online. In my experience, you need to change the culture of the people that is plan, execute and govern change. How do you achieve that? I'm sorry, I um, had a um, glitch in the um, internet there. I missed the last half of that question. No problem. We can uh, take the time. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Just blocked out there after you said, in my experience. All right, let's, let's give it another try. In my experience, you need to change the culture of the people that is plan, execute, and govern change. How do you achieve that? Yeah, so enterprise architecture is part of the solution. It's not the entire solution. So organisational change management is a complementary um, activity that can uh, work with um, the enterprise architecture. Um, but knowing where we need to, um, to drive towards is um, part of the, um, the, 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 act, the key activity to knowing how that cultural change might take place as well. Um, complementary, but um, almost independent pathways. We got another question. How do you go about defining business capabilities? Yeah, that's right. That's why I suggested in the speak that this, um, talk that there's two ways of uh, approaching that. There's the ideal way, which is we talk to the business, we understand what they want to do. We collect um, information and insights um, through, through that process, which um, ideally that would give us the most accurate outcome. Um, but in a pragmatic sense, um, understanding what industry we're working in using a reference model um, can be a quick way of getting some of the benefits there and then refining over time. But business capabilities do need to be um, couched in the terms of the business um, that's operating. Thank you very much. We do have another question just received virtually online. How do you connect business capabilities with BPM? Yeah, that's a good question. And each organisation is going to take their own approach to this. Um, in um, the, the, the Lean, Lean IX model, obviously, there's no direct relationship there. There is the, um, the requires relationship. So the, the question really is, what is the, um, the business value we're trying to derive from this? Um, if, if we can get um, value out of our uh, models by having business capabilities and applications, uh, processes and, um, and applications, then that may be all we need. But if we've got a specific business need to relate those to, let's look to the outcomes we're trying to achieve and then uh, model that in the way that's going to give us that outcome. We got another question, if you're happy to answer. When would it be the best to decide your own capabilities instead of using a template? 
Oh, right from the start, absolutely. Um, a template will only get you so far. Um, there is um, immediate um, adjustments that will be need, need to be made for any um, reference model, um, and then um, building on that, um, we should be getting it refined over time. Now, a business capability model should be stable, but not static. All right, I still want to have a little look around inside here. We got another question. Probably it's all the Australians which are awake since a couple of hours. For us, it's really early in the morning. Another question. How do you get a buy-in for capabilities in management teams? Yep, and it's tools like Linux, providing those visuals that are accessible by those management teams. So that's why I made the comment in there about um, Archimate modeling, which has got a place. It's um, valuable in certain contexts, but when we're talking with management teams, pro providing visuals that they can relate to and identify where the gaps um, and opportunities for adjustment would be. I think we've got a lot of um, Asians in here as well today. We've got um, uh, some of our um, clients from Japan as well as um, some prospects from Malaysia and um, Hong Kong that were also in attendance in the Philippines. So call out to them as well. All right. Do we still got some more questions? I'm very happy that uh, many people of you are using our chat function and our stream. Yes, we got another one. What deliverables would make the most impact in your organization when you started with EA? Yeah, and we find that um, using the standard use cases from Lean AX is a really good um, stepping stone. So, and as Ross spoke about in his talk as well, just collecting the information that's already um, or collating that that's already um, available in the organisation through spreadsheets or whatever, application portfolio management followed by application um, uh, portfolio rationalisation are typically some quick wins because there's um, insights into that information already available. But once you've got that foundational piece, that's when you can start to really extend and get um, sort of business differentiating outcomes. Do you have any tool to measure the business value gains generated? That is a challenge. I mean, that's not part of the, um, the, the standard change management um, challenge. Uh, it, it is um, going to be specific to an organisation as well. So how do we measure the process, the people, personnel, the, um, the, the efficiency gains and those sorts of things? Um, it's probably a, a bigger conversation than I can um, succinctly answer here, but uh, there, there's... Um, yeah, a lot of ways, um, largely reporting on the project outcomes and the metrics there. All right. I do not see any more questions. So first of all, I'd like to say once again, thank you very much, Craig Stanley, for having you with us, showing uh, different best practices. It was a pleasure. Enjoy the afternoon and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate the, uh, the opportunity.